I've always wanted to sort of do my own thing. Got tired of building websites for other people, and that's when I came up with this company, uh, Orbotics. We build Sphero, which is a robotic ball controlled from your smartphone. You can pick it up in your hand and essentially use it like a, like a 3D mouse as a game controller. And we're about to release this game called Exile, which is a space fighter uh, top-down scrolling space fighter game that you tilt Sphero and it controls the spaceship on the screen. You can shake it to activate mega bombs. And we chose the ball because it's, it's a blank slate. It, it could be anything. So you can play racing games with it. You can play games like this tag game. We have about 15 games and apps out for Sphero right now. We're, we're doing all these hackathons around the U.S., so out of those hackathons, we'll probably have a lot more apps coming out as well soon. Um, and we also have an open SDK, uh, so anybody can build iOS or Android apps for Sphero. In the ball itself, we have a gyro, an accelerometer, a processor, we have a RGB LED, a couple motors. So it's, it's very simple from the outside, it's just a ball, but on the inside, it, it turned out to be far more complicated than we thought. Um, the first one was kind of just a couple days, but I, I went to Hobby Lobby actually and bought these um, Christmas ornaments that you can buy. They have these like clear shells and I cut off the little tab that you hang, hang it on. Um, and that was our initial shell. And the rest of it was like paper clipped together and totally like hand soldered and stuff. So it was pretty crude and it barely like was so slow and it barely moved, but that, that was our first one. Most components I'll get from DigiKey. Motors and things like that, I'll do surplus. So Sphero costs $129. You can buy it direct through us. You can get it through Amazon. You can get it through Apple Store, uh, Brookstone. Like pets go crazy for it. Dogs love it and cats go crazy. Since I was like five years old, I remember having like this box of just random parts that I never, I didn't know what any of them were, but just taking apart cameras and Walkmans and things like that. So when I started in the robotics stuff, I think my dad took me around all the like electronics repair shops and we just like filled up my room with TVs and all kinds of crazy stuff that I would take apart. I started building robots when I was 12 actually so it's I've been building and creating things for a long time so I got in through this this beam robotics and sort of the philosophy behind beam robotics um, is that it's you sort of use like hacked materials you're pulling apart cassette players and um, but they also have a very aesthetic sense to them so they're if they look good they're supposed to function good and they mimic biological things so like some of the a lot of the robots that I built early on were legged robots, solar powered robots um, that looked like insects, and I don't know. I, I liked sort of the creative aspect of it, um, but also the problem solving and the engineering aspect of it. Um, I like solving problems. I, I think it's it's fun. I I enjoy it. I, I mean, we build robot gaming systems. Like, <laughs> how much better could it get?